Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. I could give you some guff about what Kerbal Space Program is, what it does, etc., etc., but I won't waste your time with it. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start a new game, and I'm going to give it the same name as I'm going to give the YouTube series, which is Sierra Tango Space Program. All right? Now it has choice of two modes, sandbox and career. Career is not implemented yet, so sandbox mode it is. And when we start, we get here to what's called the Space Center. Now there are four places here. The launch pad, which has no ship on it. Now it does give me a list of ships that are installed. Uh, a few of these are uh, stock. Most of them are added by the mods I have. Uh, this is the space plane hangar. Uh, I'll be going in there uh, later on in the series, uh, once I'm ready to actually start building space planes. This here is the tracking station. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can basically see uh, Kerbin there, uh, the various celestial bodies, the moon, uh, Minmus there at 46 million meters, the moon is at 11.4 million. Yeah, and of course you can zoom out even further. Uh, that's Kerbin's orbit around the sun. And we have uh, Moho, Eve, Duna is all the way over there. Uh, that's Dress. Jewel is there, and there's one more. Or is that Dress? That's, no wait, there's another one. Elu. Yes, Elu. Which is horrendously inclined. But we're not going to get to any of those anytime soon. In fact, our initial targets will be Moon and Minmus, but we're not even going there yet. Uh, before I actually go into the... Or actually, maybe I will show you the vehicle assembly building. I do have some mods installed. I have the Nova Punch Remix Pack. I have the Cosmos Space Station Parts Pack. I have the HOME Start Kit. And I have the DEMV Mark II. And those are the mods I have installed. Uh, you can look them up on the, uh, what's it called? Kerbal Spaceport. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, and they'll show up under those names. I'll also put links uh, to them on the Kerbal Spaceport website in the description of this video. And probably in the description of most, if not all, of the subsequent videos. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, what I need to do is get an unmanned satellite into Kerbin Orbit. I'm going to be organizing this into a number of missions and the number of tasks within those missions. The current mission I am calling Satellite, and Satellite really is my uh, code name for any mission in, uh, Kerb in Kerbin's orbit that doesn't go beyond, let's say, 10,000 kilometers. That's going to get us potentially into Moon orbit. All right, but anything inside of there that involves a fairly straightforward operation, either a simple satellite or a simple out and back for Kerbins, uh, will fall under the codename Satellite. Uh, I'll be using the codename Space Station for any space station construction in Kerbin's orbit. All right, but the first task in uh, Mission Satellite is to get an unmanned satellite into Kerbin orbit. I'm actually going to go, actually maybe I should restart that. That may not be the module I want. In fact, yeah, I'll start with the State Putnik Mark II. Just go for a very simple satellite here. All right. Yeah, it doesn't get much simpler than the, Sp than the State Putnik. All right. And I'm also going to go ahead and give my craft a name, Kerbnik 1. All right. And I'm going to be calling this Kerbnik. This State Putnik and what I'm attaching directly to it is going to be... Uh, the actual satellite that's getting into orbit. All right. Let's see here. All right. So I want to get a couple of these uh, battery charge packs. Let's see. Let's go to the science tab here and see what I can get. Legs. Let's see. Lander ascent packages. Cache couplers. Lunar landers. Yeah. So nothing uh, too terribly complicated. I'll add this Communitron 8888. Actually, I think a lot of them is sort of, you know, 
almost like bunny ears. No. Uh, to avoid a copyright issue, I'm going to do that in threes. No. I'm going to skip symmetry and just make one. Yeah. One will do the job. Now I have batteries, and then I want to make sure I have uh, solar panels. Let me find, uh, yeah. All right, it looks like these, uh, well, they're mostly the same, the SPA and the SPB. Let's see. The OX4 and the OX4B. Right, not much different. So I'll go ahead and go with the OX4B. I'll do a 2X symmetry here. All right. And that is the actual satellite. That is the Kerbnik. Uh, next up, let me think. The Clampatron Jr. All right, I'll go ahead and put a Clampatron Jr. at the bottom of that. Uh, link up a second. Let's see, can I link up a second? No, won't allow it. All right. Well, then it looks like I'm... Well, it may not matter anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead. And, I was thinking of using a uh, one of those docking ports, but I think a decoupler is going to be the way to go. All right. Way too big. Still too big, I think. Too big. There we go. Now that's the size I want. Now I need to add another control unit to this. I'll go with the uh, uh, I'll go with the uh, probe double dyne octo for this. All right. And this is something I'm gonna have to test. I haven't tried this yet, but I think once I deploy this, uh, once I just deploy the Kerbnik, this uh, Probo Dobodyne uh, Octo should allow me to switch to what's connected to this uh, here and deorbit. And in order to have some way to actually deorbit, I'm going to give it just a, a little bit of fuel if I could find uh, a, a small fuel tank. It should not take very much fuel at all to deorbit. Uh... Where can I find a nice small? That's way too big. I think I need to find something that's a, a respectable size. Yeah, that'll work. All right. And then I just need an engine. I don't need uh, too much power on this. I don't think. Uh, let me think. Yeah, the basic Bertha mini quad should be enough because the purpose of this is basically to try to get to finalize the orbit of the satellite and then deorbit this piece. That's the whole purpose of this here. Uh, yeah, again, final adjustments and deorbit. It should be enough fuel to accomplish both tasks if I play my cards right. All right. So next up, I'm gonna go with my next. A uh, round of decoupler. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the TR18A. That's looking pretty good. And you can see it auto, it seems to be shrouding that. That's one of the mods, I'm guessing the Nova Punch parts pack. That adds that shroud automatically. Um, yeah, let's see here. Now... This is something I want to make sure I get right. Let's see, nose cone halves. So let's see here. All halves. It looks like I need something. Okay, it looks like I need a fairing plate, right? Yeah. Let me take a see if there's anything smaller. Probably not. <clears throat> not that it'll matter because that's one two five. So 
I think 218, I think, is what I want for that. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and put in the half walls, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, nose halves up there. And there's my nose cone that's going to conceal that until the time has come. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what to make of that. All right, well, let's get rid of that decoupler. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ooh. No, I think I did want the decoupler there, didn't I? Yeah, so let's get our decoupler back. Wait, that's under structural, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. The TR-18A stack decoupler. Put the nose cone back on top. All right. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to try something here. You know what? This is something I have to test. So I'm actually going to call that Kerbnik 0A instead of Kerbnik 1. I'm just going to launch it as is. Yeah, it looks like a bullet. <laughs> okay, it looks like those did not detach as I wanted to. So let's go back to our vehicle assembly building. All right, those two are the nose cone. So we'll add a new stage here. Yeah, there we go. Nose cone, tail cone. All right, let's call that zero B. We will launch the Kerbnik 0B with that new staging. Okay. It is not stable. Uh-oh. It looks like I may not be able to get the engines charged back up on that. That is going to force a uh, minor change in design. I'm glad I'm doing this testing now. Alright. So let's go back to the VAB. Because it looks like I do have another issue that I need to consider. So before I go any further with this... Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get that off to the side there. All right, let's get that off to the side. Let's get that off to the side. All right. Actually, I may want to read... Yeah, I think I'm going to just start this from scratch. I'm going to start with my Octo. I think. 
yeah, this will work. Because here's the thing. The rockets that are going to uh, stabilize my orbit are going to get stuck in orbit unless I come up with some way to deorbit them. Unless, I mean, one option I do have, this is a little bit unconventional, but it is an option, I think. If I put that on the top, and then put a uh, state Putnik there. And then let's see, I could put an engine with a suitably small fuel tank. I don't remember which fuel tank did I use. See, that's way too big, I think. All right. Yeah, I think that was my fuel tank. Although, I mean, I don't know what extent the maneuvers are going to be that I'm going to have to do to actually get this into orbit. So I'm going to go a bit bigger on the fuel tank front. Uh, and then I want to add an engine, something not uber powerful, but with enough power. The basic berth of mini quad. Why can I not attach that? All right, let's try that on for size. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and wait a minute. That's under, wait a minute. Before we actually finish that off, I want to add, well, let me think. I need an advanced SAS module. I'm going to need some, let me think. RCS, some RCS fuel. I shouldn't need too much. I think 100 will do it. Uh, basically, the RC... Well, maybe I should go 200. Yeah, I'll go 200. All right. So, control. All right. Let's add a quartet of RCS blocks there. All right. Arguably a bit much, but a I'll take it. Uh, now, hmm. now, let me think here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add the uh, nose cone system I had last time. That's a 2.18 meter bulkhead. To which I will attach my rockets again. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself my 2.18 meter wall halves. I mean, or is that? No, it's 2.5 meter. Not 2.18. Yeah, no, it's going to be too, it's not going to be big enough once I get my satellite sorted out. That, actually, let me go and get my satellite sorted out here. Batteries. Solar panels. My communitron. So that gives the satellite a purpose. Now I'm going to add my wall has hmm. interesting all right and let's add my nose cone. <laughs> this is a really funny looking rocket. And I'm wondering if maybe I shouldn't have considered 2.18 meter uh, components. Do they make 2.18 meter RCS tanks? Well, that's way too big.
Let's go ahead and set that aside. Oh, too small by a good margin. All right. No, that was an engine. Yeah. It looks like RCS comes in one and a quarter and two and a half meter. All right. Well, I'll have to deal with this. Um, but what I can do is adjust the location of these so that they're a little bit better located for their actual purpose. Um, or, no, do I want those up? Yeah, I think I'll leave those up. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, structural. Let's get ourselves, how about a TR-18A stack decoupler? There we go. And that provides a solid connection up to the engine. That should minimize the instability. I think it's the Nova Parts Pack that does that for me. All right. Uh, but at any rate, uh, let's see. What do I have as far as structural components go? I mean, do I want to go with this stack tricoupler? Do I want to look for some other coupler? What exactly do I want? Let me think. Have a look here. This is a one and a quarter meter quad coupler. That doesn't look too bad. So that's uh, three point seven five to five one point two. Actually, okay. An adapter now. One and a quarter meter lateral couplers. Bidirectional lateral couplers? No. I'll... No. <laughs> That's for a substantially... No. I'll go with this uh, quad coupler here. Alright. Now I need to add some uh, fuel tanks. And let's go to quad symmetry here. Now, for this stage, I do want the most powerful rockets I have available. Uh, it looks like that's probably going to be these LFA-30s with a max power of 285. All right. And then in terms of aerodynamics, I'm going to add winglets. All right, like so. And uh, then again, like so. With any luck, that should give me less spin, which should make it easier to uh, maintain control. Uh, it, it will mean less work on the SAS. And it should mean less trouble for me when, I'm, when I start to make my turn. Kerbnik 1. All right. Check. Uh, do I... Wait. Do I have an ASAS up there? I don't think I do. So let me actually go and put an ASAS up there. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as Kerbnik 1. Uh, I'm going to go and clear the launch pad from the debris of the last launch, which I'm guessing are the uh, uh, these pieces that fell off. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn the SAS on on the ground before I even take off. Uh, shouldn't be too much trouble clearing the tower with the SAS on. Throttles to full. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> looks like I lost the nose pieces. Oops. <laughs> Very much oops. Okay. Here we go. We're at full thrust here. Uh, we're making pretty good speed here, which is great. Yeah, already over 3,000 meters. These engines are pretty good. And uh, the two fuel tanks are also pretty nice. 
My question is, will it get me? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Evidently, I needed more strats <laughs> on that bottom stage. Whoa. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can actually... Well, it's something. If my SAS can hold it. Uh, 135 is going to give me a very strange angle indeed. <laughs> but hey. Alright. 28. I'm going to turn on the RCS. Uh, I think I'm going to call that a mission fail. <laughs> And the reason that submission failed is because that's the part that was supposed to get into orbit, and it has somehow fallen off. Alright, so my uh, SAS is using the RCS, and a non-trivial amount of model pro propellant just to try to hold its position. Uh... Yeah... This is not stable. This is not safe. <sighs> and I've got the probe, which is what was supposed to get into orbit, having fallen completely off the rocket. Therefore, mission failed. So the question is, do I dare to go for maximum height? Yeah, I think I will. Alright, so let's go ahead and put that up at the bottom. And we'll see what that does to my orbit. Ooh. Alright, well I'm going to stop recording here for a little bit. Alright, I'm back in the uh, launch, or in the vehicle assembly building, sorry. Alright, and there were several flaws with the uh, Kermnik 1 design. Uh, one of the biggest flaws is that these engines down here had a nasty habit of flying apart. Uh, fortunately, I don't believe that would be too hard uh, to correct. The... Uh, EAS-40, actually I think the vanilla is the EAS-4, so I think I'm going to go ahead and give the EAS-4 a shot. Alright, of course I'm going to have to replant it. Alright, check all four sides to make sure that that worked, and it did. And then I'll follow suit here on the top. Good, 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 good. Alright, and that should be enough to hold this bottom part together <laughs> until they all run out. And that's going to give me less instability. Now, what concerns me, aside from the fact that I just realized I think I had actually one of these advanced SASs up there, right? Or is that a decoupler? No, I think that's an SAS unit. Alright. <clears throat> Alright. Now let's have a look at what's what here. Okay, so one is that. That, I don't know if I approve. 
of that. Ooh, I think... Hmm, interesting. Alright, I'm also going to make an adjustment to my staging here. Alright? Now, let's see here. Alright. Yeah, let's see here, because that's not actually a decoupler, right? So, all right, so basically, all right, so here's the thing. Down here are these four, and then it is actually showing these two up here. I actually want to move these four let me add a stage if I could get them all to go into stage three yes all right and then that decoupler there should go into stage two. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to let the nose cone go with that. And then let that go with that. And then the engine up there, I think. I'm going to give this a shot. And I'm going to save this as Kerbnik 2. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And we're going to see where this goes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my SAS, leave the RCS off for the time being, throttle all the way up, and liquid engines on. And as you can see, we still have our nose cone. Excuse me, just need to get a little water there. All right. We're accelerating pretty quickly. Somehow that probe survived. Don't ask me how. All right, we're doing pretty good. We've used up about a quarter of the fuel in... Actually, that's not too bad by the looks of it. All right. So let's take a look. No, let's not do that. All right, so there's our oxidizer. As you can see, the top fuel tanks are very nearly depleted. And it won't be too much longer before I have to start making the gravity turn. Let's see if I can actually get it to roll back to the right. Alright, it's time to make my turn. Roll it over about 45 degrees. It's going to settle at about 55. Actually, it is settling at 45, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Now, I'm just going to let these uh, engines uh, finish, you, finish uh, firing, run out of fuel. Uh, I'm actually heading for, I think, a polar orbit at this angle. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, as you can see, uh, that part is uh, going. Whoa, hold on a minute. Let me see if I can somehow stop its rotation. All right. And there we go. And the best part is, <laughs> we're at above, or actually above 70,000, which means that we will before too much longer. Yeah, we, we're out of the atmosphere. So, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go to the ap apoapsis. I'm going to add a maneuver. And I'm going to add a maneuver... See, that's a periapsis of 83,000. Apoapsis is 130. 
106, 143. Yeah, I don't need to go that far. But I need to go further than that. Yeah, that'll work. That'll get me to 101. Apoapsis, 138. All right. And I've got a maneuver node. And scarily enough, enough fuel to potentially make this next maneuver. So I'm going to turn off my SAS, turn on my RCS, and see if I can't find my maneuver node. No, wait, hold on a minute. Unspin this rocket. Try to calm it down a bit. Okay. Let's calm this rocket down. All right, and it looks like that's our uh, position there. All right, now it's quite a bit of delta V, about 1,300 meters per second, but we easily have the fuel we need to pull it off. The SAS is trying to hold us in place. I'm not too concerned about us 100% hitting this. The important thing is to get the orbit stabilized. All right. As you can see, we're doing pretty good here. All right. It looks like I have a bit more work. No, other way. Uh-oh. And we've lost our probe again. So what's our probe looking like? Where's our... Actually, we might just have hit it. We might have hit it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our space center. I'm going to look there. And I'm going to look to see what its periapsis is. 101, 120. <laughs> it may have fallen off the rocket that was supposed to carry it into orbit, but it looks like we actually have our orbit. Okay, Kerbnik OB probe. It's on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and abort that. Terminate it. And then curb neck two, I'm going to fly. All right. Now you can see the probe there about 200 meters away. Now, what I want to do is try to get myself a retrograde here. Because now that I've got it, I want to deorbit this thing. All right. There we go. All right. Now. Let's see. We are here. Now I have to be careful, but I should avoid hitting the probe. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and the probe is well away from us at this point. So at this point, really, I'm just going to keep, yeah, we're deorbiting. The probe is good. The probe is orbiting. We just run out of fuel on this stage. So now what I can do is time warp up. 
And we're going to lose quite a bit of speed in our time warp once we actually enter the atmosphere. Actually, let me check something. Okay. Yeah, so it actually makes perfect sense that I would only see ocean just because of where I am. So close to the ocean. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get to the... And basically crash into the water here. Using physics warp can affect structural stability of the vessel. Don't show that again. Because I know exactly what I'm doing. Alright. You know what? I'm going to turn off both the SAS and the RCS. There's no point in having either of them on at this point. Alright. Time warp 3x. Time warp 4x. We're about 20,000. 10,000, I'll drop to 3x. 5, 4, drop to 2x, let it go under 1,000 meters before I drop down to 1x, and any moment now, this is going to crash into the water. And there we go. Alright, so let's go to the Space Center. Alright, as you can see, we still have our probe orbiting Kerbin. We actually have a little bit of debris with it. I'm not 100% sure what that, what piece of debris that is. But again, we have very nice periapsis and apoapsis here. And with that, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Uh, this has been episode one of the Sierra Tango Space Program. See you next time, everybody!